Good morning. Good morning, Mum. Well done. Good morning, maybe Stephen. Don't quite know some mystery person, but good morning to you. Welcome. So, Mum, are you eating your breakfast now, or I don't know. Highly recommended. Works a treat. <laughs> Hopefully I'm spreading this onto the communion bread. Fifteen seconds away, which is pretty much dead on time for us. That's as good as it gets. So, from our sofa to your sofa, there's our sofa over there. We've got a couple of sofas around here. In fact, we've got three to be precise. All of them came from the Heart Foundation, and you know what? I highly recommend them if they were still there, but I think they've now gone. Might have just moved somewhere else. Just gone somewhere else. There we go. Today is about hearts. Is it there? Is it there? I don't know where the heart is. Someone says it's bang in the middle. It's but not what bang is, in the middle. It's, what, it's just slightly it's to, to the, the left, slightly. Slightly to the left of it. I so think. The, is that right, Mum? Slightly, heart, it's slightly just, to the left. Where is the heart? Is it just in that bit there? I don't know. I, I'm going to say yes. Um, and because if you have a, um, if you have a stroke or a heart attack, it tends to get you in the left arm. Is that correct? That's right. Um, so probably because it's nearer to the heart. So today isn't about biology. You'll be glad to know because I may be, I may be lacking good on at many that. Things, but but not sure what about today biology. is about the heart. Now, where is the heart? Well, physically speaking, we might know where it is, but we're talking spiritually. What is the heart? Getting away from the biology, I want you to be thinking all the way through about what the heart is because it's actually quite difficult to put your finger on. You might be able to do this. It's just about here under the rib cage, somewhere around about there, but actually where the heart is, that's that's a more difficult question. And maybe that's the question for Heather a little bit uh -oh. later on. Um, or, or maybe it isn't. I don't know, it's something around there. And whose heart are we talking about anyway? Oh no, it's even more complicated. So, there we are, beautiful picture. The uh, button presser, press the button. Oh, and we go across. Oh, we have today Daniel Radcliffe, he's decided he wanted to show, you don't want to zoom in for too much because he's out of focus, so for some what reason, even though that's a, a highly defined picture when I put it on there, now it's slightly out of focus. So, Daniel, thank you for joining, he, he couldn't make nine o'clock, so we said, well, for you, Daniel, as you're an international movie star, um, playing various people, I can't think who it was you played now, but obviously Heather can tell me at least one of his movies. And Lord of the Rings. Correct. No, it's not him. Harry Potter. Oh, right. Okay. So today <laughs> shows what we actually know. And that would be Elijah Woods, who's the other one, because yeah. we get the two mixed up because they are actually the same people because you never they see look the, similar. You'd never no, see he's... the two at the same place at the same time. So there we go. Uh, why, you know, you can get two wages and all the rest of it, two sets of uh, um, histories. Well, I'm going to say good morning to Howard. He's just joined us. Hi there, Howard. Daniel is here as well. And I love the name Daniel. Daniel features um, greatly in the last couple of years. 
and there's only a tiny handful of people know why. <laughs> ah. Really interesting. So Daniel is hugely important. We're not just talking of Daniel and the Bible here. Ah, ah. what is this about? What, what am I going on about now? Well, welcome to day 8 o'clock because Daniel couldn't make 9 o'clock and maybe there's one or two other reasons as well. So hi there, Daniel. How's it going? And the new music, new new movie project. He's going to tell us about that maybe later on if he gets time. Let's press the button. Oh, today we have what do we have here, Heather? Our flower for today. Zoomed in. I have no idea. You don't know what that is. That is a begins with P. Don't know. Petunia. That's the first word. Then an E, and then a P. Pep. Poached egg. Plum. Plum. Okay, nice. Look at that. There's some fancy names. We used to names. have one in at uh, Ustock. Did we really? Yeah, we did. Where poached is it now? Plant. We left it at our last yeah, house. Yeah, we did. Well, posting plant. Isn't that just a most delightful thing? I can't... When... Uh, I was told uh, by Nick that this is a poached egg plant yesterday. I thought, well, I'm never going to be able to look at an egg. I, I don't really like eggs. I like the yolk of an egg. I like the yellow bit, but the white bit, it says in the Bible, where is the taste of the, the it white? It's good for you and eat it anyway. Yeah, yeah it's good for you anyway. Uh, ketchup on it. There's not a lot of taste in it. There's no it. taste in the white of an egg. Uh, don't, um, anyway, don't the point get your eating is, habits. isn't that incredible? What an incredible habits. thing. Moving on from me. Context. Today isn't all about me, Heather. It's, it's about... At least for a moment, the post egg plant, the incredible creation that we're surrounded by uh, from things that we call post egg plant. But the big, big question is, is what does God call them? I wonder what God says when he looks down at the plants. I know he's entrusted um, all of these things into our hands. Hey, and we've done such a great job. I'm sure he's very happy with what we've called and done. Maybe not. But I wonder what his name for all of the different things are. Um, well, we can think about that on another occasion. So we press the button and we go to songs. We're doing things in a completely oh, different order, Dave. Yeah. So whilst you go across, so I need a sip of drink. Okay. Good morning, Howard. Well, the Latin name, um, that's going to be unlikely for us too, unfortunately, isn't it? We, that's in your realm. That might be in mum's realm, the Latin name. Florio. Flora, ab Abundia, whatever it happens to Abundio. be. Abundio. Here we go. Have you got a book? I have got a book. Where are you going to sit? There sit. Behind every great woman. Let's do. There's a, a let's chat. Start with 454, which is Majesty. That's a good song. Well, let's sing this from our hearts. I think, uh, I'll say good morning. I think Mr. Coleman might be there, so we'll say good morning to you. Hi to everyone. to us one which is majesty otherwise known as here i am one one eight one <clears throat> goes a bit high I'm not quite sure what we'll do about that we'll do our best <clears throat> one one eight one 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 eight one here i am humbled by your majesty <laughs> Thank you. 
we have is because it actually goes quite low at the beginning. I did, yeah. I think there was a chance of needing to call the paramedics at one point. There was no chance of I, that. It was a, it's, it's a lovely song. Didn't it sound alright? It's a lovely song. I don't right. know what I sounded like. I was listening you to sounded Andrew, all right. and I could hear my own notes, and they were. You were good. They it were was all good. Not necessarily. Thank Correct. You. It was it's like a beautiful song. Thank Let's you. turn to three eight six. Something even higher? No, this is nice and straightforward. Jesus, the very thought of uh, thee. Classic. This can be officially called a gold moldy because it is near enough a thousand years old. Actually, Bernard is. of Clairfax, which is just the other side of Chippenham. Okay, I'm going to say good morning to Wendy and good morning to Brenda. Welcome, good morning. Ladies. Well done for being here so early. First three, is that, yeah? Well, yes. I thought you said verse three, but you're saying the first the three. The first three, that'd be the okay. first three. One, two, three. Sweeter sound than thy blessed name, O Saviour of mankind. It's one of the echoes there of why we have to be very cautious about using God's name and why, apart from salvation, repentance and that forgiveness that comes through godly sorrow, there is no forgiveness for using God's name as a swear word. If we bash ourselves into a door or we trip over or something goes wrong in our lives and we say OMG, and we know what that means. We, we say, oh my God. I said that very carefully there. If we, if we say his name is a swear word. We can get into the habit of these things, and it's a terrible habit to do, and we need forgiveness for that. We, I'm just going to pray now, Lord. Lord God, I pray that if we have that habit or we know someone who has that habit, that sin that has just got hold of them in that way, that for years they've said, your name is a swear word. I pray that today would be a breakthrough day. Today would be the day when we ask for that cleansing and that forgiveness so that the old is gone and the new has come and we'd never say it again. In that way, we would treasure the name of the Lord Jesus. We treasure the name of God, our maker. We thank you for that. those words there. A sweeter sound than thy blessed name is impossible to find, O Saviour of mankind. And we pray for all the help that we need for that break from the past and into the new, in Jesus' name. Yeah. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay. What are we going to sing? We're going to sing 1221, two, which is called Praise is Rising. Do you realise how many numbers you have there? 1221. Two, one. Yeah, 1221. Wow, I heard an extra digit. Well, how many do you hear? I was on 12,000 and something. No, 1221, two, one. you've only got four. Mr. Math. Well, I thought it was all the way through.
pretty much famous We were one. waiting for that, weren't we? Oh, we weren't. Is there one was, more? I had some slight anom- We could do one more. What? Some slight anomalies with the rhythm. But we I think we recovered. That. I think did we, we, we recovered. didn't notice any anomalies. <laughs> anomalies. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been to the doctor once and he said there are some very unpleasant well, anomalies we here. We can believe that when yeah, you see the doctor. Yeah. Did he do a brain scan? Yeah, there's nothing there to find. Okay, anomalies. now look, I'm a little frightened of saying this number. But oh, you're not, I know what number it's going to be. It's 666. Six, six. Oh, look, it's, Sometimes it's, it's got to be sung. It's 66 plus a 6. 66. Six, with a six no, million. 665, and then the one, and one The one after 665, the st- and we'll just do the chorus, the steadfast love of the Lord. The, if you live at number 13, that's fine. If you live at number 666, move. <laughs> the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. to all invisible people out there today. Well, look at that. Oh, good morning, Stephen. That's nice yeah. to see you. Hey, well done. Stephen. I'm getting out. Good morning. Did I say good morning to Wendy earlier on? I can't remember. Brenda, everybody, you're welcome. If you've not tried coconut juice, now if you have, I know, Nick, you're saying just keep that coconut juice. I know some of you tried it and it just doesn't work for you. You're obviously wrong about that, but hey, I understand this. I've just noticed a huge dent in the side of the car. But that's for another story. Coconut juice, how refreshed. I don't feel refreshed. I feel refreshed. That as an ice If you water, like coconut, oh, you like that. Would be the best. Okay. I put down here for Ephesus, for Pergamon, for Thyatira, Sardis, Laodicea, a new little description, which is a further description of where they were at, where we need to be careful that they don't seem to know where they are. They don't seem to know they're loveless. They don't seem to know they hold on to what God hates. They don't seem to know that they embrace evil. They don't seem to know they're dead. How extraordinary. Uh, They don't seem to know that they're blind, tasteless, and deaf. What an amazing life it can be that we can be a church even, can be in that place where they're described not by me, not by you, but by the Lord himself, the owner of the church, they're described, these ones are described in that manner. Not completely, but overall, this is how he describes them. And then for Smyrna and for Philadelphia, there's a a good description over them. The Lord is pleased with them. So I just felt that was needful for the day. We press the button, we see that we're on day uh, 832, which is actually... 20,000 hours, 20,000 hours long. We're pretty much on the 20, next week we're over that, but we're pretty much on 20,000 hours worth of this. That's crazy. That's going to be the longest sermon I've done or anyone's ever done. Um, 832 weeks, 100, 832 days, 119 weeks, 2.28 years. And we've got this scripture here today, which I, I went into Heather's oh, prayer room this morning. No. And I'd had this up there already. And so watch out. Watch out. What you see here is a sheep, but it's not really a sheep. It's been morphed with Photoshop, so there's a bit of a wolf in there That's as well. Really clever. It's no, very clever, but kind of scary. You were saying you came in my prayer room. The point of that was? Uh, the point, I didn't find a a, a wolf wrapped in uh, in sheep's clothing, uh, but we just had a brief chat. I said, what are you thinking about? She was saying she was thinking about where we can end up. What happened in those five of those seven churches is that uh, wolves had crept in, teachings had crept in, people had crept in with things which are not found in the Bible. 
they twisted things around and ended up with what is called false teaching, which leads people astray. Need to just stick to the Bible. If you can't stick to the Bible, give up and do something else. You got to stick to the Bible. You don't want a description. It's better just to be, you know, away than so horrendously compromised. So we need to be very careful. We need to be careful. It says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. It means you don't recognize them. You, If you do, you recognize them as sheep. They look the same. They, they look like sheep. They look gentle. They look mild and meek. But underneath are ravenous wolves. And the way to do it, all you've got to do to find out if a sheep is a wolf. What have you got to do, Heather, to find you out if a sheep is a wolf? You just squeeze them or you just poke you them a little You give them a bit. little poke like that. And if they bite your fingers off, it's got a wolf. If they go and, as it were, turn the other cheek, they're a sheep. Cheek. Sheep. <laughs> it's a simple, it's not rocket science. Um, I've poked people in the past, just a little bit with some words, not nasty words, but say, I don't agree with that. And then they turn around, they bite your arm, clean off. That's called a wolf. Cool. If they go, oh, let's have a think about it. Let's have a look at the Bible. Bible the Bible yeah, to say, yeah, 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 yeah. If the Bible doesn't come into it, wolves. Yep. Totally. Wolves. Don't be deceived. So watch out for that. Because by their fruits, you will know them. And you think, well, I, I know them and they're, they're sheep. Ah, you're, you, you might be right. They might be sheep. But it, when, when it's been identified, perhaps, that they are uh, wolves, someone has said, oh, watch out for this person here, or watch out for what they're saying, watch out what they're doing behind closed doors, watch out for who's following them and the manner of which they're following after. The reason why we can be deceived is because we haven't poked them yet. You're getting on well with them, and they're getting on well with you. Their arms are round you your shoulder, and, with them and you haven't disagreed with them. All you've got to do is say, hang on a minute, I'm, I'm not so sure about that. I'm worried about what you're saying. It, it, you can do it as a test. Do it as a test with someone, even with yourself, if you're being led astray and, and question things. You've got to question things. Line it up with the Bible. If it lines up with the Bible, perfect. If it doesn't line up with the Bible, it's not perfect. I was talking to some Jehovah's Witnesses the other day. You say, yes, are they agree, are they agree, are they agree, are they agree. They don't agree. They're twisting the words around. All you've got to do is give them a little poke and say something like, you know Jesus is God, don't you? And they go, ah, no, we don't believe in that. Up until that point, they're seemingly agreeing like a sheep. Give them a little poke. And they go, oh, no, no, we don't agree with that. Do you believe in eternal punishment? Do you believe in hell? Oh, no, we don't believe in that. Oh, so you can effectively get away with it. God doesn't judge you. You cease to exist and you are no more. And there's no punishment at all, really, when it comes down to it. Uh, yeah, that's what you believe in. Okay, you're, you're a wolf. You're leading people astray one way or another. So you need to watch out for that. Really, really, really important. We press the button. What do we go to? We go to a time of prayer. Say good Have... morning, Rosemary. Lovely to see you this morning. Now, is that my favourite mother-in-law? No, 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 I don't call my mum Rosemary. You do don't. I, I was thinking. Mum. This is another lady. Oh, it's, oh I know, Rosemary. God bless you. We're going to pray right now. We've got the lovely picture from Did Martin of those uh, pop is there from a few, couple of years ago, 2020 that would have been, yeah. and they haven't been back since. I don't, like, they're not there this year, are they? Was it I last don't year think they are, no, 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 no. I think it was a one-off yeah. special. Yeah, one-off special. Love pop -ins. We've got lots of pictures there. Let's just pray. Lord God, you know, I glance around and I see some of the words on the page and I listen to the news and we wonder what's going on in this world. And in, uh, I think, 1969, Marvin Gaye um, sang, what's going on? What's going on? And we say, what's going on? And I remember our daughter, Millie, saying to someone about, in a way, all these things and about what's going on. And she went, well, it's sin, duh. And it's true, it's sin. The reason we, get, we say what's going on is because of sin. Sin in this world, in my life, in our lives in this world, in politicians' lives, in governments, in communities, everywhere, in houses, wherever we are, wherever we are. This general curse of sin on this world and then sin being acted out daily 
your word the bible tells us and our ears tell us and the telly tells us and movies tell us that your name your even your name is blasphemed all day long well we thought a little bit about that we pray that out of our hearts out of our lives we pour praises not blasphemy we pour wonderful words not bad words not filthy words would you clean us up make us bright and shiny and beautiful mm. for you Lord, where there, where there are wolves out there, plenty of them out there, um, in, in in all manner of places, Lord, would you would you break into those lives and turn those wolves into sheep, or send them away, never to be seen again down here, Lord? We pray for safety. We pray for wisdom to perceive perceive when there's a wolf around, ready to deceive. Wow, there's a complicated set of words for someone with a lisp that we would perceive when there's a wolf around so that we wouldn't be deceived into thinking, oh, it's just a fellow believer, a fellow sheep, as it were, looking to the shepherd when actually they're, they're, they're not sheep at all. They're wolves and they want to take people away after themselves. And often they, they're leaders. Often they, they take a role. So we pray for all of our leaders, wherever they're found, and those who are about to be appointed as leaders, Lord, would you please um, deal with us all? Deal with us all, mm -hmm. Lord, wherever there's that wolf-like character and spirit, that evil spirit at work, wanting to take people away with doctrines that are false, with um, personalities that are just persuasive. Lord, we don't look to man or woman. We don't look to people. We look to you and pray for your will to be done. We thank you for everyone out there today. Lord, would you put your hand on them that are watching right now or watch later on those that are going through the mill in a way that's us we're going through the mill a bit or we pray for our dear daughter and all of our family as a whole Lord, will you please help us all we need your help i pray for your special blessing on um, wherever your word is just preached and wherever there's real openness before you and lord from a dear friend keith um and his uh the fellowship that he runs uh um, and from uh, another fellowship down in Durrington, where I'm speaking at later on, Lord, I pray for your blessing on uh, Chippenham Christian Fellowship and upon Durrington Christian Fellowship as well, Christian Church as well, or Community Church as well. Lord, I pray for your blessing on the little sofa church here today and, and each of us. We need your help, Lord. Please, would you come near and speak to our hearts and, and work in our lives and accomplish just what you want lord there's a list of a lot of things here which we could think about but we just bring them all to you and pray for your your help because we need it and this world needs your help we pray that even people like boris johnson and, and joseph biden would get on their knees and humble themselves get down on their knees and look down rather than think that they've got the answers where they clearly don't they'd look down and then they'd look up to you and say lord would you have mercy on me a sinner thank you anyone who comes to you in that godly sorrow like way with real repentance not just remorse but real repentance will be saved and will find all they need in jesus name yeah. amen. Amen. amen i felt last week i was speaking down at dorchester and the lord really spoke it was a wonderful occasion pray for god's blessing upon uh, dorchester community church as well lord would you please help them today be with glenn who's preaching today pray for your blessing on him down there as well in jesus name amen amen yeah. okay well we could have had the lord's prayer and we will our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen let's do a little bit of adjustment here i think i've got to do that right it's just about there um and we go to communion yes in this order today so um let's go we'll go how are we going to do this well we can sit over here like i'm putting it yeah. turn the camera around sorry everybody
we call it communion. Um, we've got some wine. And I felt a real impression today that we're meant to drink it all. Um, there's only two of us here, but you're all out there as well. Um, and we've got some bread. And I felt an impression of that, that that's all got to go today. I don't know why, but it has. It's all got to go. It's, I think it's it's a symbolism of the whole thing. This is important. So whatever you have, don't go and grab a whole loaf. Um, and I, funny thing as well is I, I took the, the crust and then I felt the Lord say, um, no, just the piece of bread underneath. And I was really praying about it. And so I took the piece of bread, which is a slightly nicer piece of bread underneath. And and I had a picture straight away of the two pieces. One, it's like the, the, the two sides of in a way, of what this is all about. One is dry and, you know, not very nice. You know, you wouldn't choose it, the, the crusty bit on the end, perhaps, uh, unless you really like that. But generally, you know, this piece was worn out. And then the fresh bread underneath. And with the, the bread and the wine and what this is all about, Jesus Christ dying on the cross, this is both wonderful the best news in the world and the worst thing that's ever happened. Nothing worse than God in the flesh becoming sin for us. He took the worst, it was the worst day ever. And he, the whole of history focuses in on that. The whole of everything goes to that point. This is when the old was done away with and the new came. The, the New Testament began. And the Old Testament ended. The old was going and the new was coming. And the the transition from the old to the new was from, in a way, bitter to sweet. From And it costs so much. And so as we've got the bread and the wine there, I'm struck with these words here from that song. Um, oh, can you see that a bit better than me? Yeah. Do you want to read so let us examine all our ways and return to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts and hands to God in heaven. And that's from that song. The um, steadfast love of the Lord never, never ceases. ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. He is so kind to us, so generous to us. And we just say, thank you, dear Lord, for this bread and this wine. Um, you know, we, we you know, I feel we're meant to eat it all today, Lord. We'll, we'll eat it gradually as we go along through this time. And it doesn't have to end. You know, the, the, we, we break things up into such traditions and they have to be done in a certain sort of way. Um, but we'll, we'll work our way through this just in little times during, um, during the rest of the service, maybe just afterwards as well. And one of the reasons I think for that for today is because when the Passover, where this comes from, when they came out of Egypt and they were going into the promise, they all had to go. The, the meal was finished and then they left. And one day the meal, you might say, of this life will be finished and will we'll be gone. We'll, we'll, it'll all be over. And as the Lord Jesus gave it all for us, uh, we're meant to receive all that he has given offered we're not meant to turn our noses up at anything and often we have we take the tiniest little bit i remember as a child watching um people take the bread and some people just took the tiniest little crumb it's like there's nothing there and put a little bit in their mouths uh, i thought well maybe that's what you're meant to do or maybe it's broken up into little squares we make his way too narrow we, or too broad. We make it different than the way that it is. We're meant to stick to the instructions. This world isn't working because it doesn't stick to the instructions. So let's let's pray now. Lord, I want to say thank you. We want to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your body that is broken for us. Thank you, Lord, for this bread, a picture of your body just smashed up beaten to pulp lord i had a bit of play fighting with isaac yesterday great fun um but i come off worse quite achy this morning in places knuckles and 
things and we had a right laugh lord and but you, you as i had that deliberately we did that for fun lord you went deliberately to the cross and you died for us you took the beating and the spitting and the hatred and the words and the the spears and the nails and the humiliation and then you became sin for us for for three hours on the cross darkness on the face all the lying and the blasphemy all the things we've said thank you for stopping us from saying things we shouldn't say and doing things we shouldn't do but lord we lord i just pray for that brand new beginning you'd make us real christians none of this pretend rubbish waste of time fake we don't want to be church goers we want to be christians lord would you please speak to us today in a very special way cleanse us from all of our sins the whole lot in jesus name amen amen lord jesus yeah just just take a piece Thank of bread you. just take a bit of bread and as you will during the rest of this time let's just eat some of this bread you know the lord jesus he he dipped I think they probably did i don't really know these things but dip the bread in the wine and then he gave that to to judas on that occasion but to them all that i believe this is the way that they would do it so lord we we say thank you i've never done that before lord i just pray Praise you for your kindness to us. You give us all that we need, nothing that we need, you withhold. Let's just pray for your blessing on these little symbols that you give to us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> okay, let's see where we are now. Yeah. Could you just move that table? You know, there's a time and a place for everything. We haven't really found many times or places or your place for another one of our take times to be holy soon and very soon i'm sure a little opportunity will open up for us to gather together in this crazy world and you're very welcome rosemary you're very welcome everyone's very welcome just to come here and just to share and some bread and some wine and to sing some songs and to praise the lord and to look at god's holy word and maybe maybe even this coming week i don't know maybe maybe the following week i don't know i think I've got a feeling possibly later this week. We'll see. Prepared? Is it going to appear? Is it going to give us the pictures there? There they are there. There's one there. And all oh, it's doing things. It's doing things. There we go. And is there one more in the middle? There it is there. I do hope you are prepared. There's, there's a famine of God's word. There's going to be a famine in this world. Well, what would we do without water and without um, food and also money? These things are going because this is God. We need to know God's word above all things. If we know God's word, we know him. We worship him in spirit and in truth. We need to be prepared. Let's not be worried about tomorrow, but let's not be caught out by tomorrow. And we won't be caught out by tomorrow if we know God's word and we can be very peaceful no matter what tomorrow brings knowing that he holds all things and he can well look after you and well look after me no matter what happens tomorrow but be prepared here we go this is the word of God for the day what are we going to look at well this is a famous picture from astronomy is that how you say it? Astron astronomy astronomy with an n you were right astronomy, astronomy I think astronomy no you got that it's astron. Astron. Ami. Ami. Yeah. Ami. You talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> Capiche? Okay, look. Uh, 
some heart turning is needed. So I was praying and asking the Lord what I should speak on today. And we got a very short, we finished Job, or Job was finished with us. And our, one of our grandsons is called Ezra. And we're looking at a little bit of Ezra today. That's where we are today. There it is there. We're not uh, right at the end. We're kind of more towards the middle than the end. And just a tiny little part. Some heart turning is needed from Ezra chapter 7. And here they are. Oh, look, there's some words and scriptures that are appearing. What does it say? That first one there. And let's put another one up there. And another one. It's all appearing. Can you see it? Beautifully appearing. The wonders of modern technology. I'm going to put up the penultimate and we'll save the last one for the end, which will appear just about here. So let's just read these through together. Heather, would you like to read them? Because you're really good at that. Do you want me to hold that for a uh, second? Ezra chapter 7, verse 6. Mm -hmm. This Ezra came up from Babylon, and he was a skilled scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. The king had granted him all his requests, according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. Some of the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites, the singers, the gatekeepers and the Nathanim, came up to Jerusalem. On the first day of the first month, Ezra began his journey from Babylon, and on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. And then there's a little bit of him. And they kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy, for the Lord had made them joyful, and had turned the, top, had turned the heart of the king of Assyria to them, so that he aided them in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Super duper. Um, you, I can't recommend reading Ezra enough. Uh, it's not a great long book. Listen to it. Uh, you probably type in on Spotify and it would be there. Uh, lots of apps on that are available for your phones, whether you're on one format or another format, and you can just listen to the book of Ezra. So please do that. And I pray that you would do just that. Listen or read the book of Ezra. And within the book of Ezra, um, you've got this little section here. And there's just a few things I want to say from this, which will be encouraging. I pray for you. So I think I'm praying that this is a word of God that I've heard, that I'm sharing, that I'm listening to. We need our heart. Where is the heart? What is the heart all about? You know, it's not just this physical thing here. It's something so much more than that. It's just the biology. The heart is a picture of kind of who you are and willpower. The will is a very strange thing. How does the, the mind and the heart work together? Where we say yes and we're obedient. Or we say no. There's a song which I actually sang last week. To obey is better than sacrifice. I don't want this. I want that. God wants our heart. In the middle of the Bible, in Proverbs, it says, my son or my daughter, we might add, give me your heart. He wants our hearts. He wants to be able to mold us and make it. There was a singer called Marilyn Baker, and she spoke, sang a song about, um, you are the potter, I am the clay. And, you know, clay can harden. And our, our prayer should be, Lord, even though I've become, you know, I'm old, I, I'm set in my ways. Lord, you're, you're the only one who can mold me and reshape me and, and somehow break me down. But to break down a pot that's set, um, whether it's got cracks in or not, is you know it's going to be painful. It's going to be difficult. Whatever it costs, Lord, to reshape whatever areas of my life, even if it's the whole lot, according to your will. Because you know best. Do you know best? Even if you say yes, you're wrong. The Lord knows best. Lord, would you reshape us all? whatever it costs. It's a painful prayer, potentially, to pray. So what we got here? Ezra is an individual. You, you're an individual. I am. Came up from Babylon. He came from one place to another place. He was in one place. Babylon is a picture of the world. Jerusalem, in a way, is a picture of God's will and of heaven. He came up from Babylon. And, and that's where we need to go, from where we often are to where we should be. Things had happened one of the things that had happened was that God had spoken to other hearts. The king of Assyria, God had changed things around. God was ordering things around. God was bringing around circumstances which were going to affect so many people. In fact, one could easily argue, change the world. And God is interested in changing the world, which is what he's doing. And he's allowing in one way, very actively, and sometimes standing back from it. And towards the end, it, it, there's a picture of God saying, okay, you want to crack on 
and he gives the world a period of time just to be on its own. Probably a period of three and a half years just to be on its own in, in many ways, led by the Antichrist. You don't want to be that in that situation. You want to say, Lord, your will be done. Would you manipulate my life? Have your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. Jesus prayed it. How much more should we pray? He came up. He went from one place, Babylon, and he was heading to Jerusalem. He was a skilled scribe. If you've got skills, it hasn't really come from you. God has made you the way that you are for a reason. Use the skills that you've got for God. It's basic math. He was skilled in the law of Moses. The law leads us to Christ. The law leads us to Christ. That's why we often say, in what sort of way? Well, if you've told a lie, broken God's law, the law of Moses, not Moses' law, it's just called the law of Moses, but Moses didn't come up with it himself. He got it from God. If you told a lie, you're called a liar. What are you? A liar. And we think, oh, I feel awkward about that. How can I be saved? There can't be any liars in heaven. In fact, it says the lake of fire is reserved for liars. Liars go into the lake of fire. It was meant for the devil and his angels, but liars go there as well. Well, can anyone be saved? Please, Lord, would you have mercy on me? That's exactly where you meant to get to. The law of Moses, skillfully shed, leads people to a point of desperation where we go, well, what can be done? Can I be saved? Yes, of course you can be saved, and you need to be saved which the Lord God of Israel had given. God gives. God wants to give to you and to me exactly what you need and sometimes even what you want. If what you want is what he wants to give. The king had granted him, Ezra, all his requests. Now, you know, you ask, can I, Heather, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do the other? Can I do these things? And she says sometimes to me, can I do this, that, and the other? We, we work it out between us. But this is a slightly different situation. Sometimes we're granted permission and we're allowed to do things, and that's really lovely. But the king, this is a remarkable thing. God had worked in the heart of the king, and all that Ezra wanted to do, he was granted. The whole, all his requests... And the king will grant you your requests if God is in it. If God is in it, he will make your way straight. He will guide you. I mean, you know, I just pray that the Lord would have, would speak to someone today. That's all I want, really. That you'd speak today, whatever it takes. Speak to me, speak to you, speak to someone today, whether here or down at Durrington in, a, in a, a, an hour or so's time. According to the hand of the Lord, his God, upon him. According, God's got a plan, and Lord, would you line our plan up and, you know, alter it around and change it so that your plan can fit into our lives and do everything that it wants, everything that you want. According to the hand of the Lord, his God, upon him. Imagine God's hand being upon you on your shoulder. Sometimes you might put your hand on someone's shoulder as a sign of, um, being their friend, sign sign of um, caring for them, a, a, part, a sign of support, of um, mutual um, togetherness along the way. God's hand was upon Ezra according to all of his requests that had been granted to him by this earthly king, really by the king of kings, and his God's hand was upon him. What a wonderful place to be. When I get to heaven, I want to meet Ezra, and, and I want him, wouldn't it be wonderful, you could say, Oh, you're Jonathan. I mean, it's unlikely. You're Jonathan. I've heard about you. When God's hand was on, I think, really? Really? How humbling. How humbling. I can't imagine that's possible, but it's possible. Never thought about it like that before. I'm looking forward to seeing him. He can't be looking forward to seeing me. Well, he'd be looking forward to seeing me if God's hand is upon me. And I want to be extraordinary for him. I want to be extraordinarily used in whatever way, whether it's in tiny little ways that no one else notices, but God's plan is that way. Or in other ways, whatever way. I want to I know this, don't you? I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. We're jumping around a bit here. Some of the children of Israel 
the priests, the Levites, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the Nethinim, they were like um, servants in the temple, came up to do it. Some of them. That jumps out to me. Some of them did. Why didn't they all come? Why didn't they all come? Some of them came. And, you know, when you look behind, you think, oh, where's, where's Bill? Where's Fred? Where's Chloe? Where's James? Where's, where's Rachel? Where are these people? Oh, they didn't want to come. Do you remember that in the Chronicles of Narnia? Where weren't there five of you? Was it five in the call? Weren't there? There were four in total, were there? Mm. Um, you remember the names of them? Not really off the top Peter. of Peter. Not necessary. Um, <laughs> no. But Susan wasn't there. Susan wasn't there. She didn't get there. Some of them came. What, 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 wasn't there another one? Yeah, she liked the frilly things. She, I mean, I get goosebumps on that. I remember that reading that. C.S. Lewis said she likes she liked the frilly things. She liked that. I am sure she was going to get there. She didn't get there. She didn't get there. She liked the frilly things. One of the most profound things written in a kind of secular spiritual book outside of the Bible. Okay. On the first day of the first month, Ezra began his journey from Babylon. He stepped out in faith. You've got to do it. You can't just you know, believe it in theory. You've got to step out, began his journey from Babylon. Babylon kind of is not a good place. It's not a good spiritual place. It's, they were taken there captive because they sinned. And sin leads you to a sinful place, to a place of judgment. Babylon is going down. One day that whole system of things goes down in a day. It's all over. And on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem. Do you know what? There are very specific times written down here. And they're an illustration of there is a very specific time when you or I will take that step of faith. And when we will arrive at our destination and it's set. You know it and I know it. God has our days. He has our times. He has our moments. You know, he knows what's going to happen. We don't. But there is a day when you set out and you can know that day. Today could be the day you step out of faith. And there's a day when you arrive. Maybe this is what I might be speaking on later on. I'm not sure yet. According to the good hand of his God upon him. Step out. Lord, guide me to step out right now. And would you get me to where I need to go when I need to be there? And it might take some time, but there'll be the first day of this brand new beginning. And that is a good, good day to be on. There was a song from some years ago. Isn't it a good day? I'll try and find um, Violet Burning. Do you remember that? I don't. There's one of the kids' songs from years ago. We'll try and find it for later on. And then lastly, verse 10. So we can jump around a little bit. This verse 8 out. Um, for Ezra had prepared his heart. God had done it. He was willing. You've got to be willing. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, God's ways, and to do it. And to teach the statutes, to teach his ways and ordinances in Israel. He prepared his heart. He knew what was true. And he wanted to share it. That's all he wanted to do. This service I'm speaking at or sharing, joining in with down in Darrington is called a sharing service. It's been going for 30 years in this particular way. Apparently, I've never been to it. Um, and I don't think so. Um, a lot of time, a lot of things have happened in 30 years. I don't think I've ever been to it. And uh, it's it's freely directed by the Holy Spirit. And I pray that God, you'd speak. and We'd know exactly what you're saying from your word. And we'd learn from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, that was short and sweet. And then we press the button. We say, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. It's kind of like the asking. With thanksgiving, praising. Let your requests, fits in with what we've just had, be made known to God. God wants to hear what you have to say. And, uh, and that he would just um, answer those requests in his perfect way. We press the button. Is there anything going to happen? I think it should. Oh, there we go there. Psalm 3. Hello, here we go. Do you want to come a bit closer? Yeah. We'll just keep you an eye on the time there. Okay. Let's do a verse each. Psalm 3, we've done Psalm 1 and 2 and Psalm, 100, uh, Psalm 19. This is when David fled from Absalom. Let me hold it. Can you put it, please? Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. 
Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. Selah. That means sort of stop and consider, we think. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. Selah. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. Selah. Wow, love it. That's a powerful one there. David, all because of sin being allowed to creep in and David's will being done, the consequences are there are definitely consequences for choices. And one of the consequences, unforeseen consequences in David's life was the, the, the wrecking of his family. And it all started really in many ways with looking in the wrong way at Bathsheba. Shouldn't have done it. Just avert our eyes, Lord, would you protect us from sin yeah. and help us to even just imagine the unforeseen consequences so we'd run from it knowing that it will take us down and not up. Oh, do you know what? We don't often recommend this sort of thing, but God's comic we started to watch yesterday, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. It was like a very profound message delivered with um, kind of profound humour. Some of us might find it a bit close to the mark, but I would recommend if you could watch this with an open heart, have your Bible in front of you, and, you know, he doesn't say anything which is wrong. Um, this was really profound. Brad Stein, God's comic. It's a stand-up kind of comedian, but he shares the message. He shares the gospel. He shares the profound things, the realities. In 2012, and it was so 10 years ago, really, really profound. Can't say any fairer than that. Is that would you say yeah, so? Yeah, yeah, agreed. Really good. We haven't watched it all yet. It was so profound. It <laughs> makes you laugh, but it makes you cry as well. Yeah. We also watched the film again, The Time Changer, which I, I put on my Facebook last night. Watch it. Really good. Where are we? We're nearly there. The big question section. I'm going to give you an extra minute. Here we go. What does it say? Oh, How do you know when the Holy Spirit is grieved, when everything can carry on as if nothing's happened? Well, do you know what? I think if you, the, it feels like there's a flatness, actually. And you, I feel, when I've had it, you feel alone. And you feel like, oh, I'm separated from God. Something's not quite right. But you can ignore that, I think, and carry on. As if you, the deal is, is you need to attend to that straight away as best you can if you think something mm. might be up. Are you, a little bit like when... You know, if, if Heather was ever to offend me, I can't imagine that ever happening. You know, there's a little bit of a difficulty. And, you know, it happens very, very rarely when we rub each other up the wrong way, which we, we're really grateful to the Lord for. And that is true, isn't it, I'd say? We're not rubbing one another up the wrong way. We're grateful for the Lord that it doesn't happen very often. It was just, there was a delay between the done very often and we rub it one another. Yeah, if right we do that there. sort of thing, maybe yeah. if, that, if we do that sort I of thing. You know, we, yeah, I think Yeah, I think we're getting on quite well. Uh, I thought we were anyway. Are we? Please tell me we are. Um, anyway, no, the point the yes. point is the point is is that just you know when there's a little bit of distance. Let's just ask the Lord just to get us closer yeah. to Him. Yeah. And when when we sin, it's only sin that gets in the way. But let's 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 be open enough to the Lord to know when the Lord isn't there anymore. Yeah. When He stepped away because we've stepped away from Him. Yeah. And we're the ones that walk away in churches. So it's five out of the seven, five out of the seven were in massive trouble, massive trouble, massive trouble. So we need to be really honest before the Lord. Easier said than done. Or is it? Where are we? Here we go. May God's blessing surround you each day as you trust him and walk in his way. May his presence within God and keep you from sin. Go in joy, go in peace, go in love. There we are there. Oh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his face upon you 
and give you and me peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord, I've just got to pray. Lord, I do pray for our daughter in particular today that you put your hand of healing on her and help her, we pray, Lord. And for um, all the help that you've granted into our little family so far, we're very grateful, Lord. And we look forward to whatever you've got in store through the rest of this day and the days ahead. Please bless our son-in-law and our lovely grandchildren and our lovely son and his lovely wife and us here. Lord, um, it's, it's been a tough tough few years please lord would you just encourage us today in jesus name amen amen thanks for joining us should be back to normal time next week yeah back to nine o'clock so it's now nine o'clock time for sofa church Take you care. nice to see you catherine god bless you all Bye. yeah bless you <laughs>